Good yawn. Ooh. Nice yawn. That's a good one. Heartfelt. <laughs> I felt that one with my whole, a whole lot of yawn. I wanted to do one of these. Mm. Mm. Okay. Let's get in it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, Brett Johnson. Hello. 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 It's nice to see you. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. I, uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen you in shorts before. This is my day off look. I have no show today. Nice. Yeah. So I'm like fucking chill, brah. You have, uh, you got any big plans on your day off besides podcasting with me? I got two of the shows I'm, I'm trying to see. Okay. I got tickets for Zoe Coombs Mar. Oh, I've see. heard she's very funny. Yeah. I'm cur- so I'm curious about that. Okay. Um, and I actually had a good show yesterday, and then I took notes, of audio notes, afterward to be like, oh, that was a good riff. And so I want to transcribe those back into the show. Nice. Yeah. I got to do, uh, I got to, I am actively avoiding listening to the show that I did yesterday because it, it was very rough. Yes. There were two Americans in the audience who actually were like enjoying themselves, and then five teenagers from London who hated it. Mm. And they paid me in tuppence. <laughs> and left. Yikes. Yeah, it was bad. But I did I did I did my time. You pushed through, yeah. You know what? That's what this festival is all about. It's Maybe pushing doing, through. Yep, doing your time. Oh man. Well, I'm uh I'm glad that you got a day off and I'm glad that I get to talk to you on your day off. Me too. About this movie that you hate, which is a, this is a, this is a strange pick. You think? Uh, for a com- I feel like I've never heard anybody who from the comedy world who mm. doesn't like Zoolander, yes. but you don't like Zoolander. You know, I'm going to say that's the movie I'm going to use for this podcast. Okay. And, uh, you know, full disclosure, I've, <laughs> I've like warmed to up to it a bit over the years, but I, I, it's really, I have a deep undercurrent of dislike for it from, from when it first hit the scene. Okay. From when I was first, like came out right before, like shortly before I was in college. And I remember freshman year of college, people talking about it, talking it up and it just it, it grates it grates on me a okay. bit just a bit you know i've warmed up to it again a bit but i'm summoning that that brett for this podcast because which is, of, that's good which is a genuine brett yes yes i like that i like genuine brett and i first well, i didn't realize you were that old if this came out right before you went to college yes it could a couple oh years before God. yes yep Dude, this is a dude this is from 2001. Mm-hmm. I was I was in middle school. Yeah. Oh that's, man, well, I was in high school when it came out. Right, but you have a sprightly you have a sprightly spirit about that, you. Yes, you're damn I'm right. Like I sixth do. grade. Yep. And this is this is wild. I hope I can be I hope I can be as sprightly and fun loving as you are. That's a at good, your age. That's a good goal. Many should <laughs> desire that. <laughs> okay, so Zoolander, if you uh, if you've been living under a rock for the past. 20 odd years is a 2001 American action comedy film directed by Ben Stiller starring Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson and Will Ferrell. It is about a narcissistic male model named Derek Zoolander involves him becoming the pawn of corrupt fashion executives who are plotting to assassinate the prime minister of Malaysia. Mm. It received mixed to positive reviews, uh, but was a massive box office success earned. Well, I guess not massive. It was, you know, it doubled the budget, 60.8 million off a $28 million budget. It's one of those things. It's become sort of like, it's definitely a a comedy movie icon. I would say Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, you got the, the, this is like the dawn of the frat pack as they, as they so often call it. And there's a lot of real quotable moments and fun scenes and all sorts of stuff. And it's just, it boggles the mind that I, I've never met anybody who didn't like it. So what? Tell me about your experience. Like the first time you watched this, what what was going on? I was thinking, I'm like, okay, this movie. It's it's sort of consummate, like pre nine eleven, uh, American, like sort of like like peak presumption of of I can we can do what I want, we we'll want, we can do what we want, and people will laugh a little bit. Like we're gonna make a real glitzy, glammy, very flashy, fast cuts. 
stuff with celebrities mm-hmm. kind of film. Yep. And uh, throwing a throwing some goofy, dumb, dumb lines like, oh, so dumb. It's funny. Orange mocha frappuccinos. It, it, right, yeah. right. Yeah. It, and it, I feel like, yeah, it's sort of... um. You know, you know, like you're saying, kind of birth of the frat pack, whatever frat pack. You said frat um, <laughs> thing, uh, and we've gotten some good. There's been some quality films. I've, I mean, I think Anchorman is head and shoulders above fucking uh, Zoolander. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you on that. Anchorman yeah. is like top tier, right? For sure. There's definitely a layer of movies. Like if I pull up the frat pack list, Zoolander. For me, Zoolander is probably near the top, but like Anchorman soars above it, Talladega Nights even sure, yes, far above it. For sure. I just think, I feel like it's, you don't meet anyone who is, no one says that they're like, no, that's still no one's like top flick anymore. I almost feel like, okay, here's, all right. <laughs> it's, yeah, you know. <laughs> I know. It's, 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 it's yeah. It's yeah. It's like it's um, it's just kind of dumb. It's flashy, and I feel like it gets away with a lot because uh, it's it's just it's just straight silly and not in a smart way. Like having dumb characters doesn't make up for shitty jokes. You know, like Ooh. doesn't make up for bad writing. Ooh, that's. I mean. Yeah, I, I think, think you know the root of the problem. Derek Zoolander, Ben Stiller. Uh huh. The lead is he. He's not funny. His physical comedy is not good. You know what? The, there's exceptions. The, here's the exceptions. Of the Owen Wilson is good. I like Owen Wilson and Will Ferrell is good because mm-hmm. it's Will Ferrell being Will Ferrell, and it was like one of the first times we saw him being all out. Right. Will like Full pedal to the metal. Will Ferrell. Fe- yes, and it's and it's it's wonder. He's good. Like you know what I mean? It's we we like we love that Will, but like. The, 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 Ben, you know, Stiller making the face, you know, it's like, how is that? Like, it's not funny. Doesn't right. make people laugh. It's a little, it always felt a little effeminate mocking, like making fun of effeminacy. Okay. I felt like that was, that's the thing is I feel like it's got all these like things that I'm not, I'm not a huge fucking woke, woke boy over here, but like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, um, the targets felt easy. Like right. who was, who, how was, uh, male models or models in the zeitgeist at all, which you can say, sure. Like, Oh, they took a different I mean, thing. Right. Models are sort of, I guess, always in the zeitgeist just because they're on advertising Around, everywhere. Right. But like, I mean, from that standpoint, sure. I never really, it, I think it seemed kind of, the speaking is like the a twelve year old who watched this for the first time. Yes, I was like, yeah, this scene, oh, this is novel and silly, but it also does have that undercurrent of like, oh, they're def- they're mocking like a different like a it's a it's like yeah, I guess it's like feminine masculinity because it's male models a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and and um. Yeah, like like uh, like the, it was played for a joke. Again, like mm-hmm. mock what you want to mock, but give me like kind of give me give me give me a little substance behind it. Versus just like because he talks like this, it's sort of like like now it's sort of like a thing. Like we do it because of Zoolander or whatever. Right. But it's like um, like d- does anyone actually think really 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 ridiculously good looking is funny? Like, is that actually funny or is it just dumb? And because it was on the big screen and by a guy we recognize in a flashy format, we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all, all right, I'll follow, the, I'll follow okay. the, the lead here. All right, so, all right, so here's, here's a question I'd like to posit to you. Shoot. First, first and foremost, if we're going to talk about dumb comedy, <laughs> because this movie is extremely dumb. Uh-huh. It, is, it is. Yes. It's a movie... With dumb at the at the core of the movie, mm-hmm. it's tr- openly exploitative towards its characters. Mm-hmm. Where the you know Will Ferrell's character and uh, and Zoolander's agent are both like, yeah, we got to find a male model who's dumb enough that we can brainwash him, and Zoolander is that model. Right. People having a gasoline fight. Sure. Um, all of the names for things being fucking stupid, like the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Want to Kids Who Read. Yeah, yeah. Re- exactly. Um, the files are inside the computer. Sure, sure. Again, there's a couple that like that. I feel like that it's sort of a really drawn out, but that's a nice like that was a nice bit. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. But it's dumb. It is. I dumb. mean, it's the movie is wholly, whole, fully dumb. Now, I th- I think that we this might be where our disagreement lies. Sure. I think that I can get. I think that I'm okay with a movie being. 
dumb for the sake of being dumb Mm -hmm. and get away with it in a way that I don't necessarily care about the writing because I think it takes like a, I think it's so hard to write something that dumb Uh and not have it come off as unfunny. Not has, have it come off as unfunny. If it for, (sighs) <laughs> like, and listen, it's my first podcast of the day. I'm not no, no, totally no, dialing no, in. No, I'm just trying to figure out that. But it's not. Ex- I, it's oh, have it, and have it like it's, have it be super dumb, but still work as a dumb line. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. It has to be dumb, but also cannot be stupid. Sure. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Like stupidity and dumbness are, are sure. separate yes. for this. Yes. For right. Sure. Yes. In the sake of in the sake of comedy parlance, things can be dumb, but done in a smart way. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a lot of Zoolander that achieves that. Mm. Um, But you do not. And again, I think it's, I really, I I feel like it's, and it's, uh, it's Derek Zoolander is at the heart of it. Okay. I don't think, I don't, that's a thing why it was so annoying to me. Like, I really think it's his character and even just, you know, like, the the how he was played for laughs mm-hmm. and, and again it's sort of like he's not Ben is he's you know he's a multi hyphenate right you know what I mean he's a producer he's a comedian he's a nepotism you know he's got a whole bunch of <laughs> he's a, <laughs> <laughs> you know he's got a lot of things in there I don't think he, like he, is he physical comedian I don't think so I don't think so either I was it's I was just looking at this list of uh, of frat pack films mm-hmm. and. The movies that Ben Stiller, I think, does the best in, and the ones that people remember him for the most for besides Zoolander, you look at movies like The Cable Guy and Meet the Parents. Right, yes. And Royal Tenenbaums. His smart-ass, smarmy self mm-hmm. is, I feel like that's that's him. That's the comedy secret sauce of Ben Stiller. Yes. That's where it really is. Yeah, and so for him in this role... It's like I, I didn't know what he was trying to do. I, I didn't get. I didn't get the character again. Like, who are you making fun of? Mm-hmm. That's what I was like. I was just sort of like, again, like, like, is it is it flamboyant men? Is it, you know, like, like, what's the like, what's the joke here, Ben? Again, again, it's like someone like Owen Wilson. He he's got he's you know he comes he's got he's space cadet like that's his right. thing and he nails it. Like I, I I enjoy him right, but yeah I, I really it's Ben that that gets me and I think it's I think there's so much um I think there's it's covered up I mm-hmm. think he, I think they, they he gets away with it just just enough for it for this movie to have just sort of like puttered along right and just and just been just been there as a thing right how they, about- they put enough <laughs> Billy Zanes in and Jerry Stillers you know like in the movie so that you're like. All right, we'll 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 stand him. I got a th- I got a theory I want to run by you. Okay, right. if Ben Stiller was not in Zoolander, mm-hmm. you would like Zoolander. If he did all of it, if he directed it and wrote it the way he did, and they put somebody else in, if they put I don't know Jack Black or Vince Vaughn or somebody in instead of Ben Stiller, somebody who's a better physical comedian. Mm-hmm. So maybe not Vince Vaughn. I wouldn't particularly say Vince Vaughn's a I, physical performer. I also feel like performer. if, if the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But right. if you had like Jack Black sure, in there. Sure. Well, well, I mean, who, I mean, <laughs> how do you, how do you dislike things with Jack Black in them? Period. Right. Of course. First of all, but, but if he played, if it was a Derek Zoolander character, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think I'd still be confused. I think it'd still be like, what is this? What are you making fun of? What are you getting at okay. with this guy? If it was someone else being Derek Zoolander, like he is as Ben Stiller, uh, I, I still, I, I think I would still have, I'd still have beef. And I just, again, it's like, um, I remember watching it again. This is like, you know, like it, as a freshman and kind of being like, like kind of plot holes, like, like, you know, they have the walk off mm-hmm. and then, uh, then they're like, then they're friends, right? And then all of a sudden, he's like at his place. Does he go to make peace? It's like yeah. they become like, I, I didn't really, I didn't buy them becoming best friends. Like they do drugs, they have the whole party sequence. I don't know, like, like even dumb movies. Like, uh, th- there's the stakes. There were no stakes in this movie. I mean, the stakes are all like super mad cappy kind of stakes because it's about assassinations right, and right. models being behind yeah. I can't, again, all the political assassinations. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, which again, sort of comedy, comedy, like, you know, they, they can have their own comedic stakes. Right. But I think, I think even that, like, um, I think even that, like, 
Did any is there any emotional stakes for any character? I don't. I mean, not really, because that's the thing. In even at the very beginning of the movie, when all this devastating stuff is happening to Derek Zoolander as a character, I'm not watching him and and being like, oh, oh, poor guy. Right, right. Which the, the comedy is capable of eliciting that. Totally. I mean, think of um, Walk Hard. Mm-hmm. The whole beginning, you know, the wrong kid died. Right. Like, you know, what I mean, like that. Like that was it was very it was wicked funny and the arm and like mm-hmm. the kid, you know the brother losing like. Very funny, but still like still like some drama, and the kids are playing it straight, right? Versus like, you know, how do you setting up Blue Steel or Matt? What you know what I mean? Magnum and Blue Steel, yeah. yeah. Um, like from the get go, and again, like if something farcical, whatever. But that, I guess that's another problem that I'm finding right now. It's like that watching it, being like, like who who am I supposed to? Who am I supposed to feel bad for? Who am I supposed to care about? You know, and they plug in what's her name? The they plug in his his um. Is, 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 is the, 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 his wife the, the wife reporter? oh yeah Christine Taylor uh-huh. yeah Matilda right Matilda and mm-hmm. it's like it's like again that's another tr- st- a type that's right. fine like he's the archetype another nepotism Arch- yes yeah, yeah, yeah right <laughs> uh, um, yeah but sort of like how did, does that that's connective tissue I don't know I'm gonna I got a question for you shoot okay from a comedy standpoint as far as movies go what are some of your favorite comedy movies um, uh, I'm a big Bill Murray head, so okay. I mean, I mean, this Groundhog Day, of course, but gotcha. like I watched What About Bob a lot growing up. Okay. Um, like I said, Anchorman's great. I mean, I enjoy I like Walk Hard. Um, okay. So you're still, based on just even those those four, and I'll say really realistically here because I've never seen What About Bob, so I can't okay. make an assumption about it. You you need stakes. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, even Anchorman has stakes, and Walk Hard has stakes. They're really fucking silly movies, mm-hmm. but they at least feel. Can you name so like there's me, something there? Yes, yes. So, what's a Zoolander like one that you think is there? Is there another like stakes wise? Is there any that come to mind for you that we can throw in the mix? Well, that's the thing. I think. I mean, if we're looking at it from a from a pure silliness perspective, mm-hmm. I think Anchorman is probably the closest mm-hmm. because. It's both obviously like super highly stylized worlds, the very very fictitious portrayals of things, uh, a lot of cameos, a lot of stuff that is de- that is designed. To, you know, they're just getting jokes out constantly, mm-hmm. right? I think Anchorman is probably the closest thing to it. So between Zoolander and Anchorman, of course, Anchorman would be your preference. For sure, for sure. Why is that? I think, oh, here's, okay. Is it, what, is it Will Ferrell? Is it something oh, sure. else? I think it's, I think, I think, I think the writing's better. I think the story and stakes is, was more interesting. It's something, it just feels more grounded, even though it's silly, mm-hmm. like they're very silly. Um, the supporting cast is, of course, incredible. Um, you know, uh, I don't think anyone really likes Zoolander. I think Zoolander. I think like you ask you ask a comedian what their favorite line in Zoolander is. What are they gonna? I mean, like orange, orange mocha frappuccino. Fra- sort of like, yeah. and it's like, do they really enjoy? Do they? Is that really that funny? Is it? I mean, it's silly, and that's nothing wrong with silly, right? But I almost just feel like, don't don't you feel a little bit like, like a like a college kid, <laughs> not a comedian, when you're like that, like that line, like. Again, I don't want to. No, 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 no. You know, I As, just feel like I just like <laughs> this is what I came like, to do yeah, the podcast yeah, for. Damn it! I this just, anger. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I just feel like it's like it's just in the it's in the it's like fluoride. Okay, it's in the water, mm-hmm. and we all just drink it. All we just like okay, yeah, Zoolander. Right. You know, no one no one names Zoolander as a favorite film. Not even like no. You know what I mean? Like I would put Zoolander anywhere near my top favorite f- films. Sure. I mean, even even like favorite comedy films like. And, and that's again. That's not to say that it isn't watchable. Mm-hmm. I think you can sit and it's flashy enough. And the, I was watching clips last night. It's cuts are quick enough. Like it's a fuck ton of cameos. Right. Like, Who doesn't um, love getting to see David Bowie in a movie? David Bowie, right? He shows up. David uh, Duchovny with the hand model. Yeah, right. I mean, that's actually that's a really fun. great sequence. That was a great sequence. Yeah. Yes, it is kind of random, just like thrown in. But that, but the hand thing is a good. That's a yeah. good little. That's a good turn. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Um, but the thing is, I mean, okay. If, so maybe if we're gonna- I almost hate. Sorry to jump in. Maybe I almost just hate people's like uh, acceptance of Zoolander at, at at full like full stop. Right. And not necessarily like think the movie is unbearable. Well, that's the thing because I don't think it is. It's far from an unbearable movie. I'll give you that. It's one of the movies that 
You know, I mean, you know, I've, I've said this about other movies before in a different context, but it's totally like a basic cable movie, right? So, you know, if you're watching, like, if you're at home, you know, I did I did a lot of this in college when I still had, uh, when we had cable TV in my apartment. It would It'd be hungover, and it'd be like a Saturday or Sunday, and then you're just like strung out on the couch trying to figure out what to do. And so you pop on AMC or Comedy Central or whatever, and then something is on like Jurassic Park or Zoolander Mm -hmm. and you're like, all right, yeah, I'll watch this Mm -hmm. and recover. Mm -hmm. Zoolander is that movie. Zoolander is a movie that is totally fine. It has moments that have like affection, affection. Yes. And there's nice, and there's moments that like, I can remember quotes from Zoolander, and there's certainly quotes from movies that I like better that I can't remember. I, 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 <laughs> sure, yeah. yes, yes. Like, I love, you know, my some of my favorite comedies are, uh, like, Forgetting Sarah Marshall is one of my absolute mm-hmm. favorites. And I cannot remember, like, an actual, real, like, quotable line from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, yeah, yeah. you know? But I love the movie as a whole. Mm-hmm. Zoolander is one of these things. It's it's like a formative years kind of thing, I guess. Yes, Exactly. It's one of the movies that you watch, like you watch when you're a certain age, and if you're at the right time for it, it'll hit you in a way. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe maybe you were just like not quite in that window. Me? Yeah. I th- oh, but I have my like many peers were, who were, who were. But you're but that's the thing you you're like beyond them. You're thank beyond you. them. You're an old soul, dude. <laughs> I've gotten that vibe the, from you the first yes, time we met. With a young body. <laughs> yes. L- young, lithe, wearing shorts, biking in the rain. Ray, what is this guy in his 20s? Yeah. He's, he's 91. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's that, and it's that fresh, clean Edinburgh air, <laughs> keeping you young. Oh, feels good. But that's, yeah, I think maybe... I think maybe I mean, you're just yeah. predisposed to like to my it's, I mean, it's my not standards. Your, it's not your high. style. I kind of like. I guess I'm a little excited for people to start shitting on Zoolander. Like I'm sort of. I guess I'm just the front. I'm the bulwark. You know, I'm I'm the uh-huh. front. I'm the fore line of the gener when Generation Z gets around to seeing it. And they're you're like, you're gonna lead the charge. I'm going. I'm happily will lead the charge to tear down Zoolander. That's why I'm doing this podcast. Like perfect. It's it's. It's it's that it's that sort of just we we'll, just we just take it and we act like it's good enough. You're gonna be patient zero for people realizing that Zoolander is just an, an average to below average movie. Yes, I am Gwyneth Paltrow in that movie where she gets sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I think. Uh, wait, hold on. I think I read something about Gwyneth Paltrow originally supposedly going to be in this movie and then she dropped out. Hold on, she- maybe. Oh my god. No, I can't find that. I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> I was reading a lot about this movie while I was she uh, has taste doing research. Yeah, <laughs> she's got some she's taste. Got something. Yeah, right. This is previous. This is before her uh, her whole uh, goop line right, happened. Right, right. Okay, so this- so that, so yeah, that's that, it's that um like I just I, I think. People just, we need to realize that it, we can do better. Mm-hmm. That's what I, it's sort of like, it's like, I believe in a, as a, as a culture for us just to accept it. It's dead weight. Okay. We need to, <laughs> we need to cut it loose. You can find, watch it strong on the couch. You know what I mean? Right. Do feel free. But like, yeah. And then again, just at the end of the day, Ben does not. This is not his does role. Does not deliver. No. 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 Well, he's not a physical comic. It, and it feels he's like, not a physical performer. And it feels like, um. It does feel kind of like you're saying, like just watch. It's almost like it does feel kind of like a long commercial. Like mm-hmm. it's so it's so um, pop, uh, you know, pop, right. It's gum. very stylized in that sort of like just this. I mean, it's it's real obvious that this movie is a pre nine eleven comedy movie, <laughs> and so and only just barely pre just like, barely exactly. like it was made pre nine eleven, and then it came out two right. weeks after nine eleven. Right, like it caused nine eleven. Yeah, yeah. So this is very much in a, in a naive time when zaniness and wackiness, and there's all sorts of bright colors and mm-hmm. walk offs and and stuff like right, that. Right, there's no like it just feel, it just feels different. And it's just, it's just enough. Like Owen sprinkled in just mm-hmm. enough. Um, Will Ferrell sprinkled in mm-hmm. to really be like, oh, that was funny. That was a good scene. Or mm-hmm. I like that. Like you know, you got the part gotta, at the before the walk off when they're like facing off and Owen starts going like, <laughs> with like his hands going forth. He's like, what are you, what are you doing? He's like, stop it. Like like those little those yeah. things. I enjoyed that. Like I was watching that, being like, okay. And then you got you know saying characters' names. They're really long. Inka, Tinka Bogova. Nah, nah. It's fun. Yes, so yes. Right. You can't agreed. not can't can't not think that's fun. Yes. But here's the thing. So I there's th- this is the I I had never read this before. Mm. Okay. So Roger Ebert 
famously gave this movie a one star review. Okay. And <laughs> he said it was probably a victim of bad timing and later apologized to Ben Stiller and, and came around on the movie. But have you ever read it? Do you read any Roger Ebert reviews? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Have you ever heard any of this one? No. This one, uh, this one's pretty good because he focuses. What I love about Roger Ebert is he always zeroes in on like one thing that you're not even really thinking about mm. in the movie. And then that's the, the basis for his review. <laughs> this is this is where we start. <laughs> There have been articles lately asking why the United States is so hated in some parts of the world. As this week's Exhibit A from Hollywood, I offer Zoolander, a comedy about a plot to assassinate the Prime Minister of Malaysia because of his opposition to child labor. You might want to read that sentence twice. The logic? Child labor is necessary to, it's a, uh, to the economic health of the fashion industry, and so its opponents must be eliminated. So his whole review is about, like, we shouldn't be glorifying child labor. Okay. And that's why the movie's bad. Yeah, that's totally missing the point, right? right? Like, right, that's... <laughs> All right, Roger, we get it. You I mean, hate child labor. That's the thing. It's like, he doesn't have anything else in this movie or in this review about not liking the actual movie. Like he doesn't talk about the performances from from any character. Mm. He's basically uh, yeah. He's like there are points scored in some good stuff involving Stiller and Owen Wilson. But he's but the whole time it's just basically like how dare we make fun of killing a country where they say you can't have child labor? Right. It's. <laughs> I mean, is I mean that's the point. Is that it's like it's a silly goal that they're fighting. Four, like that's yeah. the, that's what the villains want, right? But I can't, I can't believe that this, this is like this is like to the extreme. Yeah, I know that's. I mean, like you know, he's he writes some smart stuff. This is how uh, he missed the. Yeah, it feels like the critique that he was just like, all right, I'm gonna really, I'm gonna really hit him hard with this one. I got, I got the, I got the answer for why Zoolander's really bad. Yeah, and right, it's not right. just because Ben Stiller's like fine. And to to bot to below average yeah, as right. a physical comedian. Yeah, yeah, right, right. He's like, yeah, this. I got my own take on this. This this will get him. You know, it's going to be. You know, what we need to be real pointed about right now in this post nine eleven world. <laughs> Our place in society, right. and you know what? We're yeah. putting out a bad point of view of America. <laughs> we're talking about right. how much everybody wants to get rid of child labor. <laughs> like there was like a title card at the end of the movie that was like, "And please support child labor." Right. Like, Bring back child labor. <laughs> if there, that's clear. I mean, that's clearly what Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson are all about. Of, for, well, to make this of movie. course. The, um. Feminine mocking. Oh, well, um, I have a couple of notes here. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Jerry Stiller, you know, I'll take him. There's a shot of Trump in it. I think it was B roll, but there's a shot of Trump in it. So that's, that's oh, there it. is, yeah, yeah. It's quick in like the awards, like award ceremony, okay, uh, scene. But I think it's, uh, it's B roll. I don't think he's actually in the movie. Nah, yeah, no, we're not having a real, uh, Home Alone 2 situation, exactly. Right, right, as far as I know. That's not the case. I could see Trump being in this movie, though. That would make sense. I mean, it's fashion world, and that's where mm-hmm. he th- lived basically before right. he, you know, became our our glorious leader. Yes. Oh, God. Um, the uh, yeah, there's a lot of, and they also like um, uh, who's that? Who's that fashion lady that um, uh, my Rudolph would be um, on SNL? Oh man, like Bodega Vanet. Fuck. So I one of, yeah. So like, there's a Someone shot of, in that character. It's her, yeah. In that so world. She's also in a shot of it. So I think, I, yeah, I can't. Don't know if it was the B roll or not. So, so I think, but at the end, I think that's that's my beef. Is a sort of um, we just we kind of just take it as a. That's. I think it was that. I'm just like, how can this be a movie you love? People who I love, right? You know. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I. You're really making me wonder if people actually really love this movie. I don't, I really don't know. Like, I came in here ready to talk about it, and I came in right here ready to, to, be, to play the devil's advocate and defend it a little bit. Um, but it's just hard to think about, like, I mean, there are plenty of other movies that do do this better. Like, I to, to bring back the, the dumbness argument, yeah, right? Yeah. Tons of other movies do dumb comedy in a much smarter way than Zoolander does. Mm-hmm. 
Zoolander's mm-hmm. purporting itself to be a satire, right? And satire is, I mean, if you're doing it really right, it's sort of the epitome of dumb done in a smart way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With a layered commentary mm-hmm. on something else. Right. What is Zoolander commenting on? I, wh- it's how, like, nothing, I guess. Right? It's not even like, like, um, like vaguely maybe it's about, I mean, the... V- shitting on the fashion industry and like the whole like derelict like kind of thing like kind of which again it's like it's like it's a, and that even that feels a little bit like haha uh modern arts dumb right or like in that in that kind of i mean not the you know you know what i mean like it's a little like like it's not regular so it's so it's it's idiotic right well let's even look at like okay to bring up another ben stiller movie mm-hmm. where he puts on a very a sort of questionable physical performance is dodgeball dodgeball much better movie. Much better movie. And it's more obvious what the movie is trying to satirize. Mm-hmm. Because it's very clear. Hey, we're, we're bringing out how we're bringing out masculinity. We're bringing out sports. We're, we're bringing in all of this stuff. And it's very singular focus. And there's nothing that feels like we're just going to throw it in just for, for jokes and jokes and jokes without it also backing up this other point yes. that the movie's sort of trying to make. It's a, it feels insane to me that you said Zoolander purports to be a satire. Like, what the, what I mean, the hell is a satirizing? That's the thing. I don't know what it is, but it's that, that this is stuff that people say in reviews of Zoolander. Yeah. Uh, it's really. like it's a satire of the fashion industry. No, it's not. It's not. No, it is not. No, it's not. I, again, it's sort of like it gets away. It's it somehow sneaks. It somehow sca- got away with people thinking it's a good movie. Yeah. Like it had just enough little quotable mo- little moments. The you know the school for kids can't read good. What the, is this? A center for ants? Yeah, center a center for ants. The uh, the files are in the computer, mm-hmm. which is again drawn out for like six minutes, and right. they draw and it throws the thing. Like like we see it coming. And then it happens, and like okay, you know, mm-hmm. um, and and then also there's then then that doesn't matter. It doesn't end up mattering, right? You know, like that doesn't make a difference. Whatever. Um, again, fine, but you know, give me give me a pay. So like, I think it has enough. It has just enough of that stuff sprinkled in. Like it's got right. just enough little hits, just enough little chocolate chips that you're like, I just ate fucking old cornbread, you know, <laughs> and, and it got away with it. <laughs> what are you putting <laughs> chocolate don't, don't chips ask why? in okay. old cornbread for? Because they're trying to make me eat cornbread. <laughs> this sounds like some sort of fucked There's up. There's nothing like, wrong with cornbread. <laughs> like, Who hurt you with like, the cornbread? I was going to say something like union, like, like, arc- it's the cornbread, you know, coming at me. Uh, yeah, it's like it's it just gets it got it gets away with it, and mm-hmm. I'm putting my foot down, Jay. Okay, I will allow you to put your foot down on this one. Thank you. I think part of you know, I think part of the backlash too is, I mean, Zoolander two came out and flopped hard, and it basically I I didn't see it, but it seemed like it did. Zoolander dialed up with more cameos, mm-hmm. more. Ben Stiller making goofy faces. Mm-hmm. More Will Ferrell being a guy. Right. More Owen Wilson fucking people. Right, right. And all of that stuff. Right. And like well, Benedict Cumberbatch is in it playing a like a, a, a man woman tilde right. Swinton mm-hmm. thing. And it's like, well, okay, that's like that's the clip that is all over the YouTube because right. the, cum- the old Cumbie, you know, the Cumberheads. Who doesn't love the, the Cumberbatch? Cumber, the Cumberbitches. That's yeah. what it's like called. They're the old Cumberbitches. Yeah, the, you know. Uh, and I think even in that one, his whole like <laughs> Stiller's uh, Doug Zoner's exaggerated like the fa- even like the voice and stuff. I think it's toned down a little because I think it's like very two thousand one to be like I can do this and it's like a, this is a joke. This is funny, right? And now it's like all right, you're just kind of like being like not chest voice, and we're supposed to laugh at that, you know? I would rather see Ben Stiller be a straight man archetype instead of the wacky absurd character so good i mean again he's just he, better in he that get, role he gets away with it like where he, where it's uh, um like in, in um uh meet dodgeball. the parents dodgeball he gets like it works in that the character kind of thing but exactly like meet the parents like that's the still right we we like dodgeball i mean he gets away with it in dodgeball but i think it's definitely if you boil it down to it, it's basically just a guy yelling the entire time. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Yeah, man yelling. And he looks and he looks funny. Like it's like his is like he's got the the big stash and stuff. Right. Uh, but 
you know, there are other people around him who look funnier. Yes. Because he's around all these giant beefy people. Right. Yes. I will never not laugh at somebody who I see who's just like a giant like shoulders and head Mm -hmm. that are just full of muscles (laughs) because it looks insane. How can I can't not laugh at that? Yes. I'm not scared by big burly men because I see them. I'm like, you don't have, you have no neck. Mm -hmm. How do you turn and look around (laughs) to the sides? (laughs) You just swivel. Right, right. You just have a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to do a lot of moving around on Mm -hmm. your, on your hip axis. The, uh, I think the Zoolander two point is a, is a, is pertinent and Mm -hmm. it's relevant. Yeah. Because I think that shows the formula was not, is not a formula that works. It was, it was like, uh, this thing, yeah, the the cobbled togetherness of Zoolander somehow again slid, right. slid underneath just when the door was shutting. Shook, like they, they got it in, he got it, he they pulled it off. Yeah, I want to see that's the thing. I want to meet the, who who's the man behind the man here, right? Who's the editor that 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 <laughs> that worked the magic, or who's the you know what I mean? Like who's the friend that was you, like you owe that all to Greg Hayden. Greg Hayden, you know. Like, you know, sorry. Or go who's ahead. the buddy of Ben's that was like, God, dude, cut that scene. That should be shorter. Like, who, who made it? You know what I mean? Who? who it's also Greg Hayden and both. Uh, oh, or, yeah, like who? Um, like who are these audience screening groups that that saved it from from just being, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, too long or unbearable or something. I don't know. I mean, it is eighty nine minutes long, which is great. Good job. That's yep. Wait, how long is Zoolander two? Zoolander two is holy shit. It's a hundred and two minutes. Oof. I immediately flinched when I read that. I don't want to. I don't want to watch a hundred two minute long version of Zoolander that's right. worse than Zoolander. How many years after did it come out? Fifteen. Oh my god. Rule of thumb, by the way, Hollywood. If you're gonna make a sequel that's, that's taking, uh, it comes out fifteen years after the original movie has come out, and there have been no other movies in between. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't do it. I mean, it's even. Um, <laughs> It's even. I'm not a f- huge fan either of how, uh, like, the Anchorman character. I mean, he's. They've had the sequels and stuff, and that's mm-hmm. already like. Mm. And then it's like he's Ron Burgundy's got a podcast. He's got now. a podcast now. That's yeah. that's that seems strange. Ron Burgundy just did stand up spots on multiple late night shows right, to promote the podcast. Right, and we couldn't get any of those, <laughs> Brett. <laughs> How come they're br- promoting young rising comic Ron Burgundy? He, right. Yeah. Oh, he needs the screen time. Of course. Right. He needs to be on all of the late at six late night shows. All of the late night shows in the same night. At once. That's how, what he did to promote the podcast. How, who, that's, how, how bored are we, you know? How I mean, f- that's how much we love Will Ferrell and hate thinking outside of yes. anything other than the comfort of what Will Ferrell can give us when he's coming at us with both barrels. <sighs> Every channel, man. Yeah. Uh, are there any sequels that came out years later that you think are high quality? Um, let's leave out like, let's leave, leave out like trilogies, you know? Leaving out trilogies? I mean, I can't really think. I can't really think of anything. Yeah, me neither. Can you? No, it just doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah. I I mean, Phantom Menace, obvi. Of course. <laughs> right. Well, we knew, yeah, we, we're not leaving prequels out. Prequels <laughs> prequels are fair game. Mwah, yeah. You know what I do need to watch is uh, Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Oh, yeah. Which I think those came out a fair, a couple, a, a fair distance from each other. I have a friend who's a huge, who's a big Gremlins head. Yeah, that's it. You, I assume you've met people who are who are who are gremlin uh, acolytes. Yes. Oh, yes. I've just I've never gotten around to watching myself. I got big blind spots. Mm-hmm. That's the Christian upbringing. You mm-hmm. understand? I do understand. Yeah. yeah. Were you allowed to watch R-rated movies when you I were was. under seventeen? I was, but as long as they were violent and, and not, not sexual. Dirty. Yes. I mean the classic American. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> like it's uh, that the, you can like you can I I want clear and present danger you know what I mean like right. eleven that was you know missiles hitting trucks guys exploding totally totally cool right 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 but like you know vaguely sexual uh, fast forward you know cover the eyes oh dude yeah I remember it was part of I had a Christmas tradition at my house for a little bit where we would watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail while we would decorate the tree mm-hmm. and anytime the Castle Anthrax scene came on my parents made me and my sister leave the room so they could fast forward past it. Because because they talk in, about right? blowjobs. No, no oh. boobs. They just say blow. They just talk about the oral sex a uh, lot. Okay, that's right. Because the the Sir Galahad is very fertile, and there's a bunch of horny nuns at mm-hmm. Castle Anthrax. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, there is. I mean, I mean, cool. I have, I, anything I, else? Violent stuff? Yeah, let's watch that. Sure. Why not? I had this. Uh, I has a. I have a bit where it's like it's. It was like 
it just made it confusing. Like if I was playing Grand Theft Auto, my dad would be like, you know, you better not pick up the prostitute, but you hit her with your car. <laughs> Let me flip to Leviticus. I think we can find, you know. Yeah, listen, we find the right thing. Yeah, which is, again, it's, I feel like, and then it's, the, it's like you switch it in Europe. They're like, violence, they're way more sensitive to it, but sex, it's like, uh, you know, boobs on, on regular, right. uh, regular TV. And swears, too. You can swear pretty much anything on yeah. regular TV. right. That's the that blows my mind, man. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, I've been I've been come, running into this a lot, talking about guns versus talking about alcohol over here in mm. the UK, because guns are obviously super legal, but they have caffeinated alcohol still, which we made illegal in the U.S. like <laughs> seven or eight years ago. Right. That is crazy to me that they sell four loco uh, or four loco equivalents here in the UK. And they, after proof that it's like causing, you know, death and violence and all sorts of crazy shit, Mm -hmm. but they're like, in the U.S., no, we're going to put a hard stance on this. How dare we? Oh, you want to have an AK-47 to go to your shopping trip with? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Go right now. Right, right. Yeah. You can open, you can totally open carry that. You can carry that. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. You can't have a four loco in your car. You you know, you can't have anything like that in your car, but your gun... You put that in the in the cup holder. We'll, we'll cool. give you a separate rack for that. Why not? <laughs> yeah, that's but, included, right? When you get a new car, is a gun rack? Oh, cool, cool. Sweet. Oh, cool, nice, nice. Upgrades. Ah, uh, you wacky Europeans. Mm-hmm. Sorry, no, you guys aren't European anymore here in the UK. Almost, we're right. very close. Mm-hmm. It's your own thing. There's a huge clock on the wall. It's a doomsday clock. Yep, we're getting we're getting. Uh, as soon as all of these lights finally light up on their own, <laughs> that's when we know the UK has left without mm-hmm. a deal. And right. Fuel, get ready for the fuel and food shortages, new yeah. UK audience yeah. who's listening to this podcast. Thanks for listening to about Zoolander UK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we actually do need to wrap it up. So thank you for listening mm-hmm. to our podcast about Zoolander and uh, dumb shit in movies. Brett, and thank you. Thank You're you. You're a wonderful guest. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting me spread the good word. I'm happy to have you on. I'm happy to have you spread the, the good, bad word. Yes. I got to get more Bostonians on. You guys are, I mean, I had Handrin on a while back. Yeah. Talk about Avatar. Yeah. But I think he might be one of the only ones I've had on. So when I get back to L.A., Throw some more out. Yeah, yeah. You guys got some strong, exactly. solid opinions. We're an angry people. I didn't. I feel Boston taught me how to be mean. Yeah. I could, again, sweet Christian boy, all that stuff. And I knew, like, I knew when I started stand up that I was going to have to, like, or uh, really, yeah, just doing stand up because that's how we share. Where it's like comedians, all the your share effect, you're affectionate, right? By shitting on someone, and then and, and then you get the Boston fucking the juice. You know, you add it's caffeinated. You know what I mean? That's caffeinated. That, that yeah. alcohol means it's that. It's the it's that four loco. Four, four, Boston exactly. is a four loco it's heavy a, city. Yes, it is. It's like the Puritan mixed with the towny. You know, I like it's, it. It's delicious. <laughs> Well, where can the uh, where can the listeners mm. find your work and you if they like you? Uh, I'm uh, at what Brett W H A T B R E T T on Instagram and Twitter, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and my website is Brett's webpage dot online. That's how much did the dot online thing cost? Not too, not very much. That's good. Yeah, it was it was it was a cheaper top level domain. Nice. I'm also at poly theist dot com. That uh-huh. redirects the page, but that's nice. that's my solo show I'm doing. And it's a great solo show. If you're, uh, I mean, I, it's a shame that this episode's coming out on like the second to last day of the festival. Otherwise, I'd say everybody should go see it. You should just still go see it. I'm planning to bring it to New York and LA and a couple of spots too in the next couple months. Cool. Well, keep your, keep your eyes peeled for that because it's a great show mm-hmm. four Thank star you. reviews four star review baby look at that <laughs> four star review yay <laughs> yeah. uh, that's I mean that's one's all you need it is honestly like I have a reviewer coming in tomorrow I'm kind of like you know I, you don't have to like mm-hmm. I'm like you're fine you know <laughs> let's keep it let's act like this is the one you know right um, you can catch my stuff at diet j on twitter and instagram jlightcomedy.com for show dates I'm recording an album once I'm back from Scotland. That'll be about a week from uh, today by the time you're listening to this. On August 31st, 7.30 at the Pack Theater. Reserve your seats so you can get in and get that priority, sweet priority seating. And that's it. Brett, thanks. Thank you, Jay. This has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. (laughs) 